Welcome back to the program. You do a lot of films that have somehow a lot to do with what's going on. Breaking news, culture, whatever it is. We've had uh, Captain Phillips about the piracy uh, off the Somalia coast. 20 years ago, you did Philadelphia. It was at the height of the AIDS crisis. And who knew how this was all going to work out? Could you imagine then that now gay marriage is legalized in many states, that now you can be openly gay and serve in the United States military, that now being gay is a much more acceptable thing here in the United States? I could. <clears throat> and uh, part of that is just my basic, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, positive attitude as far as where we are as Americans. We always seem to be moving forward on some sort of righteous front. We always seem to be becoming a better version of ourselves. Part of that is because I read my weekly reader when I was in grade school. And as I, I read nonfiction for, for entertainment. And I think despite 49% of the time, we seem to be taking a step backward. But I think inexorably, we're, we are moving forward 51% of the time, which gives us, essentially gives us a degree of forward progress. And with, with Philadelphia and what, what was happening there, it, it was, it was the beginning of the, the, the public acceptance of the debate. It was no longer gay strangers who danced in clubs in urban centers that were dying of the disease. It was the bank tellers at our bank, and it was the people that we went to church to, and it was people that we went to high school with. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that meant to me at the time that I said, this is just an example of America constantly redefines itself. And we always redefine ourselves for the better, despite well, all the problems. Well, you won the Oscar for that film in 1993, and you, in your speech, talked about many gay men and women who had inspired you. You also went on to say this. I wish my babies could have the same sort of teacher, the same sort of friends. And there lies my dilemma here tonight. I know that my work, in this case, is magnified by the fact that the streets of heaven are too crowded with angels. We know their names. They number a thousand for each one of the red ribbons that we wear here tonight. They finally rest in the warm embrace of the gracious creator of us all. Mm. Well, I, I'm sorry. That's where I feel. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. you, you were emotional then. And even now you tell me you believe in the glass half full and the inexorable uh, if progress. I'm using that word correctly, forgive yes, me. Yes, yeah. no, really. But then, did you? Did you think then? Because you were so worried and sad about it back then. Well, uh, th that's a very emotional moment that plays itself out in front of billions of people. Um, but I, I did feel that the, the time would come where a common sense would prevail and we'd be able to understand our brother's dilemma uh, more than we care about our own uh, uh, narrow sense of, uh, of, uh, of some brand of, of law that is uh, re beyond that, get to be made by men. You are collaborating with CNN yes, yeah. on a series of films about the 60s. Yes. The first one in November will be about JFK. Yeah. You were seven or something yes. when he was assassinated. What do you remember about that time? Uh, I remembered thinking that this doesn't happen in the real world. A president doesn't get shot in front of everybody uh, the way John F. Kennedy was. Now, at seven years old, I'm barely even a socially conscious being. Um, but the overpowering sadness of every adult I came across um, was uh, was rattling, quite frankly. Uh, everybody can remember where they were and what they were doing when uh, John... I was in the second grade and our teachers started crying. I, I hadn't seen grown-ups cry ever uh, anywhere in my... In my this is it. And here, suddenly, uh, this was going on. It was, a, it was a type of confusion that, and man, look, in a lot of ways, uh, we're, we're still reeling from, you know, ripples from that confusion. What will the film show us? Well, the stuff we're doing for CNN is really taking how television covered these great moments, both of history and sort of like society, everything from, from news reports to uh, like the, the British invasion of rock bands. And it's how this medium that was really just coming into its, its first uh, great technological muscles and, and how it now looks so incredibly primitive 
that we almost wonder how we hung so much importance on the truth that television told us when really it was it was dictated by copper wire and innuendo almost um, and you might notice how in some ways despite all the fabulous toys and jib cameras and projections that it still it might now be governed by optic fiber and innuendo and that never seems to go away but it becomes the record always the record that is malleable you can go back and over and re, re, re -jig it but when you've got Chet Huntley who was arguably one of the most trusted names in the world in America or or, or even Walter better Cronkite. let's take Walter Cronkite the man himself on the phone on TV talking to an unseen voice and says yes yes all right all right. Well, it's been confirmed the president is dead. Um, it ends up being this 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 window that uh, that you has. If it hasn't united us all, it has. Television has empowered us to be able to have some vision beyond your you know your your teacher breaking down in tears for reasons that you don't understand. Tom Hanks, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.